Welcome back to the garage. I finished the port work on these E7 heads that are going on my Cobra. Uh, so now it's time to reassemble them and get them ready to go back on the car. So that's going to involve putting in the valve springs, the, the valves, uh, new valve stem seals. And then once they're in the car, put the rockers on. Um, these are non-adjustable rockers, so they go on real easily. And then put the rest of the car back together and we should be on the road real quick. Uh, this has been a really enjoyable job. I've, I've had a lot of fun doing this and I'm really excited to see the car back on the road and running. But before I get to installing the valves and the springs, I'll go over what I have done here and uh, the improvements I hope that I've made on these heads. So I'll start here with the intake ports. Um, so the intake ports have been opened up to match the gasket and I've done the same on the intake manifold. I've also, and I'll put a light in here, I've also cleaned this up. Now I could have gone a lot farther and done a lot more, um, but on the intake side, if you get it too smooth, the fuel will stick to the walls of the, of the intake port and you won't actually get any performance out of that. So um, I've done kind of a moderate port job. Also, I didn't want to risk destroying these heads by cutting through into a water jacket. So I didn't go too crazy but definitely cleaned this up and made it smoother. So air should flow quite a bit better and I should get some more horsepower out of this. Now on the combustion chamber here, um, again, I didn't remove a lot of material, mostly because I didn't want to risk lowering the compression on these heads, um, but they were very bumpy. Um, there were a surprising number of little bumps popping out that didn't seem to serve any purpose other than being poor casting. So I've smoothed these out quite a bit without getting too aggressive. Um, they should burn much cleaner and hopefully make more power, but we won't see that until we get it onto the car. So in the bowls, I didn't want to remove a lot of material and change the shape of the bowls and change the shape of the airflow. What I wanted to do was smooth things out and remove the ridges and the casting flash so the, the air could follow the same path, but do it smoother and more efficiently. So that's what I've done here. Uh, not a lot of material removed, um, both on the intake and the exhaust. Um, there were ridges here where it was machined. There was a lot of casting flash it was very bumpy in there. I probably could have done some more work around this valve guide boss on the intake, but from what my research has said, the biggest gains are on the exhaust side. So that's where I spent most of my time. Now these exhaust ports, this is where I actually removed the most material. Uh, these ports I've made much bigger again to match the gasket like I did on the intake side. I also removed uh, the emissions bump that was here, there was a large bump here where this little hole is. And I also smoothed out um, the valve guide boss quite a bit. So this is gonna get a lot better exhaust flow. And from my research I've done on these heads, that's where kind of the biggest improvements are available. So that's where I spent the most effort on these heads. I'm gonna start assembling heads and get them ready to go on the car. So one of the things you have to do with these new valve springs is set the installed height, which is the height from where the spring sits on the head to the bottom of this retainer here. And they give you a little tool to do that. So you put it together without the spring and with these shims and you add or remove shims until you get the correct height. So I've already done that. Um, but since I'm putting this together and I don't want to do it another time, I'm going to just double check those once more. So with the valve in place, these are the shims that I used before. Put the uh, retainer on, put the keepers on, and then we pull it up just as if there was a valve spring in there. And hold this all together. And then this is the measuring tool that they give you and it's just a little rod and you fit this in here and it should just slide in there. It shouldn't be too tight that you can't get it in there and it shouldn't bounce around. And it's, they give you a spec, it's 015. So you can measure that with a feeler gauge. So if it's loose, you can check and see how loose it is. And if it's too tight, then you remove a shim and then measure it and see if you're closer. This one feels just right so I can put the valve spring on. Okay. 
Before I put the valve spring on, I have to put a new valve stem seal on. These particular ones came in the kit with the valve springs that I bought. Uh, the other important thing is that everything needs to be lubricated when you put it together so that when you start the engine for the first time, you don't have unlubricated parts moving up and down. So the valve, I dipped actually the stem in oil before I slid it in, so this is nicely lubricated. I'm going to add a little bit of assembly lube underneath here just to make sure I don't have a problem with these valves. What I've heard is that if they're not lubed properly, it'll actually make them pop off. So I'm going to do that just quick. The kit also comes with this installation tool, which is just a little plastic tube. And this slides over the end of the valve so that when you install the seal, it doesn't tear the seal on uh, this little ridge here where the keeper goes. Okay, so with my shims installed, my valve in, put my spring on with the retainer, and then I put my valve spring compressor on, and this is going to squeeze the spring so that I can put these retainers on. Now, what I have found is that it's incredibly hard with this particular spring compressor to hold the keepers in place with one hand and release the valve spring compressor with the other. So holding it with a pair of pliers helps tremendously. And that's it. Number one cylinders, valve spring, valve, retainer, shims, everything is installed. So I'm going to do this uh, 15 more times and then these heads are going to be ready to go back on the car. Okay, so that's it for the driver's side head. Valves, springs, valve stem seals all installed. This head is ready to go back on the car and that's going to be the next video here on Rodfather Garage.